Hi, welcome to ingvid.com. I'm Adam. In today's video, I want to talk to you about ways to be diplomatic when speaking. Now, this is especially important in more formal situations like business or when you're working with a teacher or when in school, for example, co-workers, actual business between companies, all these things. You want to be diplomatic so that you don't offend anyone, okay? It's very easy to offend people. And a lot of this has to do with cultural norms or things that are normal in one culture might not be so normal in another culture. Now, I've had, I've been teaching for a long time and I've had students from all over the world. And I know that some of them like to be very direct in their speech. But I also understand that in some countries, that direct speech can be a little bit, you know, off-putting or a little bit offensive to the locals, right? Canadians, for example, are very polite, a little bit too polite, some people might say. And when somebody speaks to them very directly, very straightforward, they're a little bit, you know, they're not sure what's going on. Sometimes they get offended. So they're a little bit too sensitive, but just in case, you should know how to speak diplomatically. Diplomatically basically means saying something in a more polite way, in a softer way. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to learn how to do. We want to soften the language we use. So instead of saying, this isn't good. So somebody comes to you with a proposal or they come to you with a design or whatever, and you say, this isn't good. That statement, this very straightforward, very correct. I mean, you're not wasting time. You're just telling them what you think. But a lot of people will be like offended. They'll think they'll be insulted or they'll think they did something bad. So you don't want to make them feel bad, right? <clears throat> So what you can do is you can soften the language. Now, one way to do that is just to turn the statement of fact into an opinion. I think this could be improved. Now, as soon as you put I think, basically what you're saying is here's an opinion and opinions are much easier to accept than uh, statements. Now, why? Because you're allowed to have your opinion. You're allowed to have your opinion. Everybody has an opinion. When you give an opinion, you're opening the door to a discussion, to a dialogue, right? And that's the whole point of diplomacy, dialogue, having a discussion about something. So when you say, I think something, then you're softening it and it's much easier to get into a discussion and see how to fix it. Another thing you can do, always offer an alternative. If you're just saying it's bad, well, okay, end of discussion, nothing left to talk about. That person walks away feeling bad. You go on doing whatever you do. So. Soften it, offer improvement, uh, offer alternatives, and use modal verbs. Might, may, could, would, etc. Right? So I used here, it could be improved. I'm, I didn't say, I think this needs to be improved or this needs improvement or whatever. That's again a statement. This could be improved means again, I'm offering a possibility. And possibilities open the door to discussion. I'm not saying it needs to be improved, you have to improve it which are kind of modals, but I'm talking about softening modals. What you're doing is you're opening the door for a discussion. Another thing you can do is use negative questions. Okay. Instead of saying this isn't good, well, why don't we make some changes? Why don't we? Basically means I'm offering you the opportunity or the possibility to make some changes. I'm not saying you have to, but when I ask you a question like this, why don't we make some changes to this? automatically you understand that it's not good as it is, but okay, let's talk about what kind of changes we can make. How can we make this better? And then you start a dialogue and you're engaged in diplomacy. Okay. Wouldn't this be better if, right? So again, you're going to offer an alternative. You're going to offer a different way to do something and you're going to present it with a modal and a negative question, right? It makes the language softer. Again, opens the door to discussion and the person who brought you the whatever the plan or the design feels that you're open to listening to different ideas. You're going to offer ideas. You're going to listen to ideas. And eventually you guys, the two people together will reach some sort of agreement. Okay. But with all these in mind, there are also certain expressions that you should know that are much easier to accept than direct statements. So we're going to look at those next. Okay. Now we also have a few expressions like set expressions that you can use in many situations instead of very direct expressions, right? 
If somebody offers you some food, you go to somebody's house and they offer you some tuna, okay? Some people don't like tuna, that's fine. Instead of saying, I don't like it, the person who's offering it to you will feel right away, will feel bad, might even feel offended or insulted. So you don't, you don't want to make them feel bad, right? So there are other ways. You can say, well, I'm not a big fan of tuna. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to like it. But again, it's not about whether you like it or not. It's about how you say you don't like it. So if you say, I'm not a big fan of, okay, understood. Not everybody likes it. You don't have to have it. I'll bring you some uh, mac and cheese or whatever, right? Same meaning, I'm not too keen on. Too keen, not keen on means don't really like something. Or you could say, I, I don't really love it. Same idea. Well, I don't really love tuna. If you don't love tuna, it means you don't like it. You dislike it, right? It's the same idea, more polite. Well, tuna isn't really to my taste. So not really to my taste means I don't like it, essentially, right? I don't have the taste for it. It doesn't taste good to me. But again, very soft way. Tuna isn't really my cup of tea. This is an idiom and very common like British use, but cup, not my cup of tea means I prefer something else, right? Or it's just not my favorite. It, even if it's, not, if it's not your favorite, you can still like it. But the idea is if it's not your favorite, you just don't like it and you don't want it. So there's no need to say, I don't like it. It's very harsh, right? The way when you say it, it sounds to the person very harsh, very like a little bit of a punch in the gut. They don't like that, right? Uh, somebody states an opinion or states an argument about something, you say, you're wrong. Again, nobody likes to be told that they're wrong. So you can basically suggest it without actually saying it. I'm not, I'm not uh, sure that's entirely accurate. Accurate means like very correct, like very exact. So I'm not sure that's entirely accurate. When something's not accurate, it's just not right, right? So basically you're saying the same thing as you're wrong, but in a particular way that opens the door to go give them the correct information, right? And they're, they, they, they're able to accept it more easily because you didn't tell them they're wrong. They're not wrong. They're just not exactly right, but it's the same idea. I'm not sure that works. Okay, so I'm not sure that argument works, or I'm not sure that plan works, or I'm not sure something. Again, as soon as you say, I'm not sure, you're presenting it as an opinion, and therefore you're opening the door to discussion, right? Well, yes and no. Now, as soon as you say yes and no, it's really no with a little bit of yes, right? So, but if you're going to say yes and no, make sure you say something positive, but then say why you think it's wrong, and again, Anything you say, you have to support, you have to back up. If you're going to tell somebody their opinion is wrong or their process is wrong or whatever is wrong, make sure that you tell them what you think is actually right. And that way, again, open to uh, discussion and diplomacy. Somebody brings you a project or brings you a proposal or brings you something and you say, well, I'm not really satisfied with this aspect of it or I'm not really satisfied with your project. Again, I'm not satisfied with is a little bit softer than I don't like it. But again, the not satisfied, you still have a negative here. Not satisfied is still a little bit not nice to hear. So you can say, well, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. In my mind, I had something like this. This isn't exactly the same. So again, not bad, but I wanted something different, right? And if I wanted something different, that's fine. Obviously, I can't read the, another person's mind. I'm not going to give it exactly. So now we start talking, okay, what is in your mind? Okay, I'll make some changes and I'll bring it back to you. Well, I have some reservations about, right? Now, some reservations means like some concerns, some things, are, some parts of it that I don't really like and that might need some changes, right? So again, all of these things lead to discussion, compromise, and a final agreement on something. I got a few more for you. One second. Okay, finally, we have the one word answer. People don't like one word answers, especially when that one word is no. Okay. Uh, would you like to go out for a drink? No. Uh, would you like to come over for uh, a party? No. Would you like to anything? No. That word no. People hate this word, right? It's very final. It's very negative, obviously. And it doesn't give any opportunity for further discussion. So try not to answer people with a one word, no answer. Even if the answer is no, okay? 
Again, sometimes people are a little bit pushy and the only answer that they will understand and finally stop is no. But again, they're not being diplomatic. You don't need to be either. If somebody's being polite to you, be polite back. Would you like to go out for a drink? I'm afraid I can't at the moment. Okay. I'm afraid already softens, softens the whole thing. And then give a reason why right away. I'm sorry, I can't at the moment. I have to, whatever, finish a project. Ideally, always give an excuse or give an, a reason, but don't say no. I just can't at the moment. I'm busy, whatever. Actually, I need to do something else, right? So I can't do whatever it is you'd like me to do. Better than saying no. Same with, can I speak to you? No. Um, okay. Bye. Right? That's, that's the kind of feeling people have when you say no. So uh, I'm a bit busy right now, you know, maybe later. Or, uh, can you give me a minute? Okay, can you give me five minutes? Basically, I'll come talk to you later, but not right at this particular moment. It basically means, no, I'm not, I can't talk to you now, but I'm not closing the door on doing it later. But when all else fails and you forget these expressions and you're not sure what to say, say whatever you, whatever the question is, whatever the suggestion is, whatever the offer is, say, oh, okay, that's a good idea that, or that's not a bad idea. But now, again, for native English speakers, as soon as we hear that word, but we already know the answer is no, or we already know that the, the answer that we want is not coming to us, right? But we're not too upset about it. Okay. That's a different kind of, but, but fixes everything. It's, you're going to give a positive, but, and then the negative is already understood. You don't even have to say it. The listener will understand it. But if you're not sure uh, something else, you can always just give an alternative. Um, okay, how about, and then give a different suggestion, right? Uh, would you like to go somewhere? Well, how about we do it next week? Or how about I call somebody else to join us because I don't really want to be alone with you, right? Obviously, you're not going to say that part, but that's what you mean. So how about a different suggestion? Oh, I'd love to go out right now for a drink with you. But, and then you go on to the excuse why you can't, okay? Again, many ways to be diplomatic. And the thing you need to understand, if you're new to a culture and you're saying, speaking to somebody in a certain way, always pay attention to reaction. Pay attention to the facial gesture. If somebody asks you a question and you say no, for you, it's just a straight answer, right? But if they, if they pull back a bit or if they give you like a weird expression, that means you've offended them a little bit. Right away, try to give something else to soften that <clears throat> no answer, right? That's being diplomatic. Okay. Now, if you have any questions about this, please go to ingvid.com. You can ask me in the comments section there. There's also a quiz at uh, ingvid.com that you can test your use of these words. And uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and come back. I'll give you some more good uh, English lessons to help you guys improve your language skills. Okay. I'll see you then.